a comprehensive look at trends, fund profiles, and more in exploring ETFs. Semiconductor or chip ETFs, as they are sometimes referred to, is what we're going to talk about here with our ETF research director, Nina Mishra, who has brought in a lot of information regarding this space. But first of all, what actually is driving these chip ETFs? Yeah, higher? they have been doing pretty well of late, and there are a number of reasons. For first and most important, they have reported, many major companies in the space mm -hmm. have reported better than expected earnings, including Intel, Qualcomm, Texas Instruments, and NVIDIA. Okay. So prices went higher after those reports. And then there is a lot of consolidation going on in that industry, which does face rising costs, pricing pressures, and rising competition uh, from uh, China and Taiwan, Asian countries. Mm -hmm. uh, last month, Japanese conglomerate SoftBank had announced the acquisition of uh, British chip designer ARM Technologies, ARM Holdings, uh, for uh, $32 billion, which would be the largest ever European tech acquisition. And uh, soon after that, Analog Devices announced the acquisition of Linear Technologies for $14.8 billion. And last year, Avago Technologies had acquired Broadcom for $37 billion, which was the largest tech acquisition ever. So the consolidation then limits the competition among companies. Yes. And ultimately, does it make these type of ETFs more efficient? Yeah. I mean, uh, consol consolidation, mergers, and acquisition, they l often lead, lead to synergies, access to new markets, newer technologies. Mm -hmm. So that is good for the industry. Okay. And uh, while some of the traditional businesses for chip makers face challenges, uh, like PC sales are slowing down mm -hmm. and smartphone sales are kind of becoming flattish, but newer growth uh, areas have emerged for uh, these companies, uh, areas like uh, autonomous cars, Internet of Things, cloud computing, uh, wearables. So they, those are areas with a lot of growth potential. And finally, uh, there is a lot of innovation in the industries, in this industry. Uh, manufacturers, companies, these are they are adopting new materials and new technologies to manufacture smaller and better, more efficient chips. So all those are going so to be good for these companies in this space. And all of that just means good news for the investor in these types of ETFs. So you have a chart that actually shows the performance of these ETFs versus the S&P. Yes. So uh, as I mentioned, they have been doing very well of late. So on this chart, I have the three-month competitive performance of the most popular semiconductor ETF, SOXS, XX, sorry, versus uh, the most popular technology, broader technology ETF, XL, XLK, okay. and the most popular ETF, SPY, which tracks the S&P 500 index. So you see that they have been really outperforming the broader tech and the broader market. Yeah. Late. So this time you brought four examples yes. of these types of ETFs <laughs> with you. So the first one is what? So there are just four ETFs excluding inverse and leveraged ETFs. Oh, in this really? Space. There are four, four ETFs in this space, which are all good, but they have minor differences and investors should understand those in differences so that is why I have all four on okay. this competitive table. Makes sense. So the first one is by iShares, the ticker is SOXX. Uh, it is the most popular in the space, uh, it charges an expense ratio of 48 basis points mm -hmm. and it is market modified market cap weighted. So it, that means it follows uh, market capitalization weighting, but caps the maximum weight of any individual security at 8%. And uh, Texas Instruments, Broadcom, Qualcomm, and Intel are among its top holdings. Okay. 
And then uh, the, you have another one, ticker, what is that, SM? H. H, yeah. Uh, that is by Renick Vectors. It mm -hmm. is slightly cheaper. Uh, it charges 35 basis points in expenses. And it follows uh, market cap weighting without any cap on individual securities. So that is why it is dominated by mega cap semiconductor companies like Intel and Taiwan sem Semiconductors. Uh, the third one is by Spider. Uh, this, the ticker is XSD. Mm -hmm. This also charges 35 basis points. So, and it is equal weighted. So all holdings are uh, held in equal proportions. So that means smaller companies in the space, smaller, higher growth potential companies also get a lot of representation. But having a lot of smaller companies also means that it is more volatile than other. ETFs in the space. Okay, and then you have a smart beta ETF, right? Yes, so that is by PowerShares, the ticker is PSI. Uh, it is more expensive than the others, 63 basis points because of the smart beta methodology. Um, and uh, this ETF aims to outperform the market by selecting stocks based on a number of investment merit criteria mm -hmm. like uh, price momentum, earnings momentum, quality and value. Okay. Uh, so if you look at, I have the two year performance here, and I also have two years performance on the chart here. This is the comparative performance for the four ETFs in the space. And you see that uh, the smart beta one has been kind of able to justify its higher expenses with a better performance. W the uh, smart beta is which color line? BSI, the green color. Green line. color, okay. Yeah. And if you, in fact, if you go to the back to the table, uh, it had uh, it was up forty one percent over the last two years, mm -hmm. whereas the most popular one, SOXX, was up about thirty percent over the over the same period. All right, that's all good news, but there is a caveat, yes, right? Yes, I would like to remind investors that this is an industry with higher growth potential than the broader tech industry uh, sector, mm -hmm. but it also has higher risk because it's a cyclical industry. So while broader tech ETFs, low cost broader tech ETF can be a part of your core long-term portfolio, these ETFs are more suitable for more risk tolerant investors. And in all other portfolios, uh, these should be held in a small proportion and uh, should be more, the holding should be more technical in nature. All right. Well, do you own any of them? I don't. All right. You can check out more information on ETFs, generally speaking, and specifically if you have a specific ETF that you're looking for, in the ETF section of Zax.com. So all you need to do is get to the homepage, Zax.com, use the top toolbar, hit the funds tab on the top toolbar, and it'll show you how to get right to that section. With Nina, I'm Terry Ruffalo.